Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm an alien that studies the water resources on different planets, and we're just pulling up to this blue water-covered rock called Earth. Totally covered in water, should be totally fine, let's scan it right now. No. Well, we have a few issues here, ocean acidification, blah blah blah. A unique one here, warning, aquifer depletion. Well, let's continue the scans for intelligent life and see if there's anything on this planet that is actually taking care of this sacred resource that is super valued across the galaxies, water. According to my scans, this planet is covered with humans, a species that is somehow too weak to drink the salt water that covers pretty much their entire planet. And scanning all human knowledge, I see that 99% of the Earth's accessible fresh water is found in aquifers, and about 2 billion people rely on groundwater as their sole source of water? Alright, that's it. I'm gonna beam myself down and check out this water situation for myself. What are we waiting for? A pun that those feeble-minded humans could never come up with. Whoa, well, what are these aquifer things anyway? It appears that humans define them as a body of rock or unconsolidated sediment that has sufficient permeability to allow water to flow through it. In other words, any water resource underground that humans can use, whether it's some underwater cave or rock soup. It appears that while some shallow aquifers can recharge rapidly, deeper ones can take thousands of years to fill back up. Narrowing search for advanced aquifer knowledge in the human database, I can see that according to a study in Nature Geoscience, over 94% of groundwater takes over 50 years to replenish. Ouch. Additionally, about 35% of human drinking water comes from aquifers, and in some countries like this one called the US here, about 50% of drinking waters from aquifers. I'm starting to realize that aquifers are sort of like humans' global water bank. The problem is it's like an ATM where you can almost immediately make withdrawals, but then it has really slow bank tellers that can take tens or thousands of years to deposit your money. Scans show that many aquifers across planet Earth are being overused, and Netherlands water envoy Henk Ovink warns that nearly half of aquifers are past their tipping point. I don't know what that is as an alien, but it sounds scary. Let's scan some particular aquifers. First, we have the largest one in the US, which is the Ogallala Aquifer, which supplies 30% of the country's irrigation water. The equivalent of 18 Colorado rivers worth of water are drained from the Ogallala each year, and scientists estimate that it could be 70% depleted over the next 50 years. And it says here that it would take 6,000 years to fully refill the Ogallala Aquifer, according to the Uzda. I didn't know our rival alien species, the Uzda, were already on this planet. Oh wait, that's the US Department of Agriculture. My bad. And this map of major aquifers across the planet shows that many are even more depleted than the Ogallala, which looks pretty good by comparison to, say, Saudi Arabia's aquifers. Looking through historical manuscripts on the Arabian aquifer system, it appears that by pumping 5 trillion gallons a year, Saudi Arabia drained 80% of their groundwater by the 2010s. So what is draining all these aquifers dry? From news reports by humans, it appears that it is showering for too long. It appears that in virtually all cases, the main source is agricultural water usage. For example, the Ogallala Aquifer has 90% of its use dedicated to irrigation. However, one type of farming for food appears to dominate. To investigate further, let's scan what one would describe as the Eye of the Ogallala, a really mystical place referred to as Nebraska. It appears that this state is actually run by cattle because there's four times as many cattle as there are humans and the Nebraska Beef Council refers to it as the beef state. I don't know where that voice came from. With about 90% of corn and 40% of soy fed to livestock and then alfalfa also taking up quite a bit of acreage, it appears that the majority of the 20 million acres that are planted in Nebraska are for livestock. Domestic uses such as showers and all household uses just make up 4%. I was lied to. I'm leaving this planet. Is it different in places like Saudi Arabia? Must be. Well, it looks like a 2015 report shows that 90% of their water usage was irrigation. The single main use is alfalfa, which is a water-hungry feed crop, which is mainly used to feed dairy cows. After running out of water, Saudi dairy companies secured water contracts and land for alfalfa in Arizona, of all places? The inefficiency of a toddler. While a large variety of farming practices and different crops are responsible for draining aquifers across the world, livestock appears to stick out here because up to half of the world's grain is fed to livestock according to... FOW! 
My arch nemesis Fow has made it to Earth? Whew, that's the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. It's a close one. Almost 50% is huge, and that doesn't even count irrigated pasture use. No wonder all of us aliens are always tractor beaming up and abducting cows. We're trying to figure out who's smarter. Still haven't. My scanners are also picking up problems with aquifer contamination. We have climate change increasing sea levels, which is leading to salinization of coastal waters, depletion of aquifers, and arsenic pollution of deep groundwater. Yes, despite the purifying nature of the ground, a lot of those contaminants still make it down from a 2021 study that I've scanned. Up to 50% of contaminants make it to the aquifers, which they deemed widely underestimated. Such contaminants include microplastics and industrial pollutants, but also include pesticides from farming as well as animal waste byproducts and potentially pathogenic livestock bacteria. For example, due to the dairy farming operations in the San Joaquin Valley of California, 97% of well water samples contain nitrates. And zooming over to infectious risk on the other side of the world, Moroccan studies have found that in aquifers they found E. coli bacteria, and over 68% of the strains were multi-drug resistant. The study's illustration shows the source of that E. coli. Cow butts. And studies from the US and Nigeria have found similar figures on drug resistance. So what about the bigger picture here? Well, humanity's ability to survive things like climate change depends on how water resilient they are and how they manage their aquifers plays a huge role. And human conflict is also highly tied to water resources and scarcity, with water pressures underpinning several conflicts on planet Earth. To summarize my scans, while the exact source of aquifer depletion varies, it appears that livestock play a disproportionate and inefficient role in the emptying of these water sources. But perhaps most importantly, there is hope, according to a 2024 report in the journal Nature. In some cases, the right policy has already led to certain aquifers being recharged to a degree. So with the right combination of pressure on their politicians, and changes in dietary choices, humans could overcome their aquifer depletion warning. And with that, they could be water secure into the distant future. All right, time to return to my planet with my new friend and cow, Cowboy. Oh, I didn't know you were a girl. Sorry about that. Press the light speed button. Thanks. And thank you for watching. This has been a collaboration with Stories for a Better World. Like and subscribe to both of our channels if you would like. And thank you for watching.